Hi everybody, this is Tim Parrott with the National Institute for Fitness and Sport. Today we're going to be talking about balance training. A few things that we'll be covering will include the importance of balance training, a few factors that can affect your balance as you age, and if you move to practice uh, on your own in your home or in the fitness center, and then we'll have a nice home safety checklist to check your home for fall hazards. First, let's talk about the importance of balance training. Naturally, as we age, the, the, the body's ability to main, uh, maintain position over its base of support. Um, that base of support supports your limits of stability, both statically and uh, dynamically, that's standing still and moving. The constant pull of gravity just naturally begins to take its toll on the body, which makes it more important than ever to consciously train and do exercises designed to improve your balance. So diminished uh, balance and mobility should contribute to increased risk for falls, uh, which can then lead to potential fractures or injuries. Uh, there are certain limitations that can place on activities of daily living, as well as your participation in, in certain leisure activities. Uh, it's estimated that about 40% of otherwise healthy community dwelling adults fall at least uh, once a year. Uh, so it is something that affects quite a few people around us. Systems that affect your balance include your vision, obviously your eyesight. Beyond that, there's the somatosensory system, which includes the senses in skin and muscles, and the vestibular system, which includes the workings of your inner ear. Uh, there are certainly other factors that affect it as well, like leg strength, um, just the natural age-related changes that occur in the muscle strength, um, are also associated with the degraded ability to maintain dynamic balance, walk, prevent falls, and move quickly. There's also ankle flexibility, which when you have inflexible ankles, this can cause an inability to perform, perform certain movements um, that are necessary for daily activities like squatting, stepping, um, stepping up or down, that sort of thing. And there's also tight musculature, which includes having tight, uh, tight muscles, this limits your range of motion, which can then contribute to more instability, especially when you're trying to maintain balance or standing still or moving around. Uh, and when you have these limitations, that can increase your risk for a trip, which can be um, leading to more injuries as well. This just highlights the importance of continuing to strength train, um, especially also working on balance and agility. Another big factor that can affect uh, your risk for a fall is confidence. Uh, the fear of falling is a mindset that has been shown to increase an older adult's risk for suffering a fall. Um, this can manifest in stiffer joints, which causes uh, unnecessary contraction of your muscles and a flexed forward position. Uh, there's also the fear of falling that keeps you from moving. So when you're moving less, this also stiffens the joints, weakens the muscles, and increases your risk of a fall. Uh, after a fall, Friends and family often compound the problem by encouraging uh, folks to not walk, just stay home, but it is really important to keep moving and just make sure that someone's there to help you if you genuinely need it. Another big factor is posture. Um, there was a surgeon uh, in New York who recently published a journal, uh, published in the Journal of Surgical Technology International that um, a few results from his <clears throat> article were talking about the impact of the forward head posture. They say that the adult head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds in neutral position, but when you tilt your head forward, this just multiplies the force that's put on your neck, and it can equate up to 60 pounds of pressure on your neck. So the position of your head makes a big difference, and that really strongly affects your neck um, and balance. There are lots of other factors as well um, that can be addressed. You know, they're all, these could be presentations of their own. Um, there are neurological conditions, orthopedic conditions, cardiovascular disease, certain medications, and environmental hazards. Let's, uh, let's touch on some balance training recommendations. And this is certainly an area where there's a lot of developing research, figuring out what exactly, what activities are best, how often to do them, but for now, we're uh, recommending at least three days a week of balance training. 
the intensity, you're going to want it to be safe but challenging for about 10 to 15 minutes each session. And we're looking to do that balance training. So that's the FITT, the FIT um, exercise recommendations for balance training. A few things to remember while you're balance training. We want to have good posture. And this means standing up straight. Try not to lock your knees. You want to pull your shoulders back and your chin up. Good posture to remember all the time, but especially while you're doing balance training. As far as breathing, try not to hold your breath. I usually will recommend slow, deep breath, but it can be hard to um, keep that up for your whole workout. So just remember, don't hold your breath. For safety while you're doing balance training, you're going to want to check your environment for hazards and hold on to something for support as much as you need. Uh, usually, if you're doing these at home, you can do a nice kitchen countertop that's really sturdy or a good kitchen chair, just something to make sure that you have a little bit of stability there if you need it. Uh, for progression, there are three basic levels that we'll talk about in just a little bit, and here are the few of the factors that will change depending on what level of progression that you're in. So first is the arms. We can change where they are. The surface, that's what we're standing on. The visual. Uh, we can choose to keep our eyes open or closed or even somewhere in between. We can squint, just taking away the effect of the visual system on your balance. Uh, and then tasking, we'll talk about how many actions we're doing at the same time. You certainly don't need to progress in all areas at one time. Take everything one step at a time and always stay within your comfort level. Um, the first time you're doing something new, come on down to the fitness center or exercise room and this staff can help you um, figure out if you're doing the exercise right, and they can make some good recommendations for you. So for level one progression, these type of exercise, we're doing the tandem stance here, and this exercise we're gonna modify for levels one, two, and three progression. So level one progression is just holding onto the chair uh, with the arms. For the surface, we're just flat on the ground, or you can even do it seated. Visually, your eyes are open, so we're using the full, um, we're not taking away the visual sense yet. And tasking, we're just doing one task. We're doing the tandem stance. But we're level two, we can add a little bit of movement or just a different stance with the arms. So now we can go out to the side or at shoulder height. Uh, this can help with balance, but at the same time, you're probably not gonna be holding on to the chair at this point, which takes away that stability. Now at level two, we can add a foam pad or a stability ball for your surface. As far as visual, there's a few ways we can do this. One, we can dim the lights or wear sunglasses, or you can squint. Um, those are three different ways to get to level two progression here, where we're not, to we're not totally taking away the visual sense, but we're just dampening it a little bit. And then tasking, we're going to add a simple task, such as moving your arms or your head. Head turns or shoulder rolls are a great way to do that. And for level three, for the tandem stance, we can try crossing your arms across your chest. Um, usually, you know, for level two, if you have your arms out, that adds some stability. But now at level three, if we cross your arms across your chest, that's going to take away a bit of stability and make it more challenging. For your surface, we can add a BOSU ball that, that stands for both sides up. That's a product. Um, basically, half of an exercise ball that you can stand on. So if, we have, if we're standing on a balance ball or something like it, uh, the BOSU, it's going to be quite a bit more challenging. We can also use a foam pad or do this on one foot. Visually, we can close your eyes. This is going to entirely take away your visual system and make you rely on the other systems like your vestibular and somatosensory uh, systems. And for tasking, we can add a complicated task now, like counting backwards from 100 by threes. And that will usually have you do this exercise for about 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. Um, so that lines up really well with that. Those progressions, just an example of how we can take one exercise and carry it out through multiple progressions, depending on where you're at and what your goals are for, for balance. So this is the, another sample exercise here, just a simple balance stance, it's just standing up tall with feet shoulder width apart or hip width apart. Um, staring straight ahead, standing tall for about 30 seconds. Um, so that's the level one. Um, progression would be 
And level one progression would be bringing your feet as close as possible together. And then holding that for 30 seconds. For level two, we're just adding some head turns slowly. And then level three, we're gonna cross your arms over your chest. And this is a pretty advanced exercise. So you're gonna start just with about five seconds and gradually work your way up to 30 seconds in a row. Uh, this is another good one. So this is a single leg stance, level one here, or yeah. Uh, the basic exercise is just standing on one leg. Use that chair if you need to. Uh, progression one is lifting your hand from the chair and try to hold that for 30 seconds without any other support. And the second progression, you can get some arm movement in there, doing a bicep curl, a lateral raise, and that's gonna create more instability, making the exercise more challenging. And when you, when you progress like this, touch base with the NIST fitness staff, and uh, they can give you a balanced card, similar to what you're seeing here, uh, to take home with you. All right, now we have a home safety checklist that we can use. Uh, this is a resource that's available in all the NIST fitness centers. So check with your NIST staff. They will give you a home safety checklist. Uh, let's run through it a little bit here. So just from a very basic level, you wanna take a look at these four areas. So any lamp, extension, telephone cords, we wanna make sure that those are placed out of the flow of traffic in your home. Uh, do you have access to a telephone or emergency alert if you fall? If you're in a community, there's likely some sort of system uh, already provided to you, uh, but you need to know how to use it and know where you can access that. Um, having cell phone on you is a great way to do that and being able to access that in case of emergency is really important. Uh, we wanna make sure that small rugs and runners are slip resistant. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then we wanna make sure that emergency numbers are posted on or near the telephone in case someone other than yourself needs to um, contact your family or if you in an emergency need to contact um, whoever you'd be contacting in an emergency, emergency response system, uh, community personnel, everything like that. Okay, but yeah, touch base more with your NIST staff about the home safety checklist. Let me talk just a second about the rugs and runners. So there's a few things that you can do here. Uh, if, you, if you must have throw rugs in your home, um, they really recommend not having anything that is loose that you could possibly trip over. Um, so if you must have those runners and rugs, uh, try to get the ones that have slip resistant backing, should be some sort of rubber mat under there that's gonna keep it on the floor. Um, you can try some double face adhesive tape to just try to secure the back of the rug onto the floor. That's really important. Um, any unsecured rug on the floor, will it can be a fall hazard. Uh, and double check that adhesive tape every once in a while, that can wear away. And the slip resistant backing over time just becomes less effective, especially if it's washed. Um, so be, be, or have somebody help you um, check those rugs, make sure that if they are secured, which hopefully they are, uh, that the securing method is still effective. Uh, with phone cords, um, they say to move the phone the, somewhere that people will not be walking frequently. If you have to use an extension cord, place it on the floor against a wall where people can't trip on it. And then you want to arrange furniture so that outlets are available for lamps and appliances without the use of extension cords. Any cord that's stretched across a walkway will be a fall hazard or a trip hazard. All right, I'm gonna promote it again. NIST Home Safety Checklist. Touch base with your NIST staff. They can help you get that resource. Uh, it's a great goal to make your home uh, fall hazard free, that really goes a long way towards preventing injury. I'm going to talk a little bit about some equipment that can help uh, prevent falls. Some tasks, our, our natural inclination is just to be able to do them ourselves, but uh, having some aids here and there can really help prevent falls. So there are all kinds of products out there, various reachers, stock aids, long handled shoehorns, long handled sponges. Um, some equipment to help with seated dressing and bathing. All this is gonna help reduce uh, the strain on your back and a blood pressure drop. Both of those things can lead to falls. We're trying to prevent that. Um, in your bathroom, you can have a tub seat and handheld shower. These will have adjustable heights and can help reduce 
uh, fatigue and fall risk. Also don't want to have that shower too hot, <laughs> um, depending on your, your medical history. Uh, okay, so for use of ambulatory devices, walkers, canes, anything that helps you get around, well, we don't want to walk too far away from the walker, uh, especially in a, in a crowded group setting. You want to keep it close by, even if it takes up a little bit extra room. Uh, height should be around wrist level. You'll probably see a whole range of people uh, having different heights on their walkers, but we're aiming for around wrist level. When you're using an ambulatory device, try never to walk sideways. We always want to be moving forward. Um, if you ever do have to move backwards, make sure you're never crossing your feet as you step back. Um, but try to do that as little as possible. And then when you need to turn to sit down, make sure that you're fully turned around before you sit down. Again, create a firm foundation with your feet. Don't have them really close together or crossed over. That can lead to a fall as well. But use the resources that are available to you with those ambulatory and assistive devices. Um, it's important to use what is available to you. So here are a few more resources um, for more information about fall prevention and balance training. NIF staff is a great resource. We are here to help. Uh, if you're relatively healthy, but you'd like to work on some exercises preventing falls and improving your balance, we can help you with that. If you're just looking to get involved in some classes to improve your balance, we have tons of resources there. Uh, every community is different, but we all have great balance classes. Uh, if you're interested in some literature about fall prevention, we've got that as well. Or if you just aren't sure where to start, give the NIFS fitness staff a call and we can help you with that, no matter who you are or what your ability levels are. So you may also have at your community a physical therapy team, and you would talk to them if you're interested in any physical, occupational, or speech therapy. Um, you could go to them, and you would come home after each session. So that's outpatient therapy. Uh, if you plan to have a joint replacement surgery in the next, uh, next few weeks or months, uh, you could stay at the health center to recover and complete your physical therapy. Um, as far as NIST fitness involvement with that, we can help you get ready for, or we can do like, repairment for a surgery, just helping you design your exercise program with that in mind. And then after therapy, we can help you continue a few of those exercises that uh, you've been prescribed by the physical therapist to make sure that your recovery goes along very well in any of those cases. A few other people or a few other resources that you can get in contact with uh, regarding preventing falls. All of these people have a role. So a pharmacist, family doctor, uh, ENT doctor, that's ear, nose, throat, uh, the orthopedic doctor, neurologist, and plant operations, that would be the, uh, the person at your community in charge of facility, uh, facility services or operations. Uh, just don't wait until you're already having problems with your balance to start asking questions. Uh, attacking the issue early can really make a huge difference in the years to come. Next steps. Again, I'm gonna get back to the NIST fitness staff here. Uh, we provide these services at, at every community. So we do a, a senior fitness evaluation. It's a, it's a free complimentary 30 minute appointment with NIST staff. Uh, we're gonna help you evaluate your fitness level, test cardiovascular endurance, muscular strength and endurance, flexibility, agility, and balance. It's a great test. It has been really effective for identifying issues, not issues, but areas of focus uh, for health and fitness that uh, members can work on. We take a look at all of these things that I mentioned, and then we will design an exercise program for you. We call that an exercise prescription. It's a personal exercise program designed by the NIST staff and tailored to meet your individual needs, goals, and abilities. Uh, the prescription appointment includes a detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the exercise program. Again, the actual physical sheet that this comes out on might look different at different communities, but it's going to include the core um, the core details there that will help you be successful in your program. And it can be tailored uh, a few times to really meet your needs. And then we also have great group fitness classes that are available for all ages, ability levels, and will help really strengthen your muscles that are essential for good balance in your daily life. All right, let's go ahead and test your balance brain power. Each of these statements is gonna to pertain to the information that we just flew through and covered, <laughs> uh, and the answer is either true or false. All right, let's take it one slide at a time here. True or false, 
you are less likely to fall if you can stand on one foot. I'm gonna give you five seconds here, folks. All right, my friends, that is fall. The reason, standing on one foot is only one predictor of good balance. Falls can be caused by a wide range of reasons from medications to your surroundings. So standing on one foot or the single leg stand, that's it's a balance training exercise, it's a balance test, but it's only one balance test. It's not gonna be the only predictor of your fall risk. Next up, the less I move, the less likely it is for me to have a fall. True or false? Five seconds. Alrighty, folks, this one's false also because limiting your movement will have a very negative effect on your balance. That's just a fact. Muscles need activity and exercise to remain strong, and if your muscles lose strength, you'll have a lot more difficulties with your balance. Keep moving. Um, don't take the mindset of if I just stay home and don't do anything, I'm not going to have risks of fall. That's just not true. You have to keep moving. That will help reduce your likelihood of a, fall, of a fall. True or false, your inner ear plays a huge role in your ability to balance. Five seconds. All right, folks, that one's true. Good job on that one. I know you all got it. Our vestibular system tells us which end is up and which end is down. When we have disorders of the inner ear, it's very common to experience difficulty in maintaining your balance uh, when you're moving, that's dynamic balance, and when you're standing still in the static positions. So inner ear, just to sum it all up, inner ear disorders can really strongly affect your balance and just speaks to how your inner ear plays a huge role in that ability. Next up, true or false, medications can have an effect on your balance. Five seconds. Okay, folks, that's very true. Medication can have a negative effect on your balance, and you always want to discuss any problems you might be having with your primary care physician. I usually will see this pop up with um, significant medication changes. So always be in open and honest communication with your healthcare providers, and that will help prevent falls as well. True or false? Having adequate lighting in your home can help prevent falls. That's true. If you can't see it, you don't know it's there, and you could fall as a result. Motion detector night lights are a quick and easy, easy fix for dark spaces. As they immediately provide illumination as you walk into the room. We got some really great technology in the year 2020 year. Uh, so you take advantage of Take advantage of it, use what's available to you, use some technology uh, like these simple motion detector night lights that can help prevent falls, especially when it's dark out there. Um, like I said, if you can't see it, you don't know it's there. Okay, folks, let's see, last one here. True or false, you can use a cane instead of a walker if you're in a crowded space. I'm gonna give you five seconds. This one is false. If you need a walker, you need to use it at all times to remain safe. Be aware of your surroundings and proximity to seating. And if you feel unsteady in a crowded space, um, that is probably a good indicator that you need to keep your walker with you. Um, don't worry about the people around you. You need to focus on preventing falls of yourself and those around you as well. Be aware of your surroundings. Any questions today? All right. See you again soon.